It's time for Twig this week in Google. Kevin Purdy joins us to talk about Project Loom Balloons to give you internet access uh, and the L.A. School District. <laughs> they plan to spend millions equipping each and every student with iPads. Jeff's not happy. All of that coming up on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 203, recorded June 19th, 2013. Floating garbage bags. This Week in Google is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest online graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of over 200,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash twig to receive a free design consultation. And by Shutterstock.com. With over 26 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code TWIG6. It's time for this week in Google. Twig is on the air. Leo Laporte here with Gina Trapani from smarterware.org. Hello, Gina. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Jeff Jarvis is here. He's in Nuremberg, Germany, from buzzmachine.com, professor of journalism at the City University of New York, the author of Public Parts. Did you say paperback I'm, is coming out now? No, they're not doing paperback. Damn oh. them. I hate publishers. Damn them. Is there an e-book? Yes, there is. There has been. All right. Welcome. Boy, what time? It's, is it late tonight, at night? Sorry. No, it's only, it's only it uh, 8.37. It is 10.30. 10.30. Okay. Well, we won't keep you up too well, late. I'll, I'll just no. I'll just follow on my keyboard. Sometime <laughs> what do you know? Oh, and Kevin Purdy is also here. Hey, Kevin. Hello. Great to see you too. Long time no see. Yes, I'll, I've been secretly doing things. Kevin is the author of the Complete Android Guide. CompleteAndroidGuide.com. What are you carrying these days? I guess you probably carry them all. Uh, phone wise. Yeah. Galaxy Nexus, yo. You're a Nexus but, Four guy. No, no, Galaxy Nexus. Galaxy ne that old, huh? Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, outside of the, in the first world that I live in, um, I'm gonna be, I'm thinking about getting the HTC One as is Gina. I love the HTC One. However, oh no, the googly version that comes out in a week. Yeah, well, that'll be interesting. I see. I feel like there's things on sense. We talked about this, Gina, the camera mm -hmm. and the uh, gallery app that you really want. Yeah, you know, I, I haven't had it yet, so I'm, I'm, it's, I'm not convinced that I'm gonna miss it. But yeah, this always look cool. Like I've seen, you know, yeah, you, the demos you've done have been really cool. But then, but then again, I look at Google Plus and say, look at all the cool stuff they're doing with photos there. I could have my, you know, auto awesome gifs and and all that yeah. stuff. But you get that too. Uh, that way, you yeah, also get right, that. In fact, if you too. do a Zoe, it'll give you an auto awesome or a Zoe. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to say, I, I also have the Galaxy S4, and uh, this is the international unlocked one. Yesterday, Samsung pushed out a firmware update for the camera that fixed my camera flaws of the S4. So now, I don't. I'm thinking that the HTC One is less for me uh, desirable. Oh, I would. I would. If I were you, are they? Is Google going to offer a 32 gigabyte version of the uh, S4? Believe so. That uh, might be the way to go. The stock edition Google uh, S4. That because hmm. then I don't know. The camera on this is really good. 13 megapixel camera is beautiful. And uh, now that they fixed the firmware, it was crashing a lot. And now that they fixed the firmware, it's good. Hmm. Now, remember, we still got the Moto X. That's true. There's always a new thing around the corner. Guy Kawasaki. Yes. Guy Kawasaki. There's a name you remember. Is now working <laughs> at Motorola. Oh, really? Yes. And invited me to an event at the Googleplex next month. Oh. Just like in a broad invite sense, or did he hand you a card or something? He sent me an email and said, I would like you to come. It's going to be a small get-together of about 50 journalists. Yeah. Oh. I'm thinking Ooh. Moto X. I'm hoping maybe, Moto X. Maybe there's a really awesome cable modem coming. <laughs> <laughs> the new set-top box is here. Yeah. <laughs> Doxus you guys are getting 
you guys are getting it before even the cable installers are getting it. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hopeful. Now, uh, of course, a lot of the rumors about the Moto X are it's kind of a low-end phone, not the high-end phone we were hoping for. Maybe it'll be like the Nexus 7. Maybe it'll be re remarkably cheap for what it is right. and, and smooth and impressive. Yeah. Well said. I, well, I can't wait. It, but it's Motorola at Google. That's Ooh, a good sign. The first time I think they've admitted it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we own that company. <laughs> yeah, we own them. <laughs> yeah, did, did Kawasaki, did he work at Google and then move to Motorola? No, no, no. Motorola? He was, remember, for a long time he was the he was Apple, Apple evangelist, Apple. the very He's first the evangelist. Guy, yeah. And uh -huh. then independent for a long time. He's written a number of great books. His book on he really startups. Google Plus lately. He has been the king of Google Plus for the last two years. By the way, happy birthday, Google Plus. Yeah. Is it two? Oh. Is it two years old? Is Could that possibly be true? No. Oh, never mind. Um, no, no, we're, we're I, wait, barely check two it. years old. Checking, checking. Because I thought that they were going to have a uh, something. I just see that seems like They're, so long. No, it can't. Cause we're literally we're two years old, right? Oh yeah. Chat room, do some. <laughs> no, it's uh, PC guy says it'll be two no, years at the end of June. Really? Are we? Oh. Are we I, I got I invited to the Google Plus two year in anniversary photo walk and parade and marathon and photo photo apocalypse and Google Palooza in New York, sponsored by Smug Mug, and that's June 29th. Why didn't they invite me? I'm in New York and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Can I add, please invite Jeff Jarvis, because I love yes. Smug Mug. That's why. Yeah, you know circles, you're old Jeff. in two years. feels like two weeks. Can it launched June 28, 2011. <laughs> wow. Two years. Who thought and nude? Well, happy birthday, Google+. Plus. And I have to say I'm using it a lot more after. They, they keep adding features. They keep pulling me in. They do. They also fixed the the multi-four-tiered four, four -tiered, uh, uh, slide bar problem with with the alerts. And have you got the new notifications? The yes, little the saying, bell. Yes. I haven't gotten the bell yet. The bell. Have you? I have no. the bell. You have the bell. Yeah. Yes, I have the bell. <laughs> and and the disadvantage. The advantage is you get rid of those literally four slide bars it had. The disadvantage is besides it making you very fuzzy on Twig is that <laughs> it. Um, Sorry, sorry, video people. Uh, is 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 that it, it? It's a more solid experience of the notifications. It's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better. Yeah, I don't have it yet, but everybody's been, been crazy about it, so that's good. Uh, I want the bell. I keep shift refreshing. You got the bell. Look, Chad has the bell. <laughs> bell. It ding, tells ding. you what's new and holds on to it. You can't next, next, next. You go to the item and then back. Oh, which is rather silly. Well, they're always tweaking it. Can you? Jason says you can. You can? How do you go next? Uh, no. It's up in the corner. You you There's have a, a, a previous right. and, and next button. You really do look like Ferris Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I love, I love this meme this week. Uh, is the that's all folks meme? Um, I look like the turkey, uh, The what was it? The Hungarian flag was the... Uh, is, you look like the Hungarian flag. Yeah, yeah. This, the meme is what does Chad J Chad Johnson look like? <laughs> Pretty much. I was. Wow, you're a meme. <laughs> God, I'm jealous. I've never been a meme. <laughs> wow. Dye your hair, Leo. That'd be fun. What what color would you dye your hair, Leo, if you were feeling adventuresome? Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted brown hair. But no, you, uh, you could look like this. You do look Leo. like the Hungarian flag. <laughs> I says mean, that's all, folks. I don't yeah. think that's on the Hungarian flag. Yep, yep. Uh, I like purple. I don't know. What should I do? What color would go well with my olive skin and my <laughs> bright white teeth and my shining brown eyes? <laughs> Black. Black. <laughs> all right, so let's move on. Uh, limited time. We've got to move. Jeff's going to fall asleep. Uh, Kevin's going to turn into a pumpkin. Project Loon. On Sunday, we had uh, Trey Ratcliffe on Twit because he was one uh, of a uh, couple of people. It was uh, it was uh, Stephen Levy of Wired and uh, Trey Ratcliffe who were invited to go up in the helicopter and watch the launch of the first Google Project Loon balloons. There they go up in the sky. These balloons, eventually, Google hopes, this is a Project X plan to provide 
3G quality internet access to the entire globe from hundreds of these balloons floating 10 miles up in the stratosphere, well above the commercial aviation traffic. Uh, one of the advantages of being so high is they can tune these balloons. There's two chambers. There's a helium chamber and an air chamber. And they can tune these balloons remotely to make them go up or down to catch the particular jet stream flow to move these balloons to kind of keep them in position. And the, so are there humans actually making them go up and down to catch the right airflow? Ah, that's a good question. Or is it Gina, just autonomous? Of course not. An algorithm does that. <laughs> it's a, well, do you, it, only if you How consider a Python program a human. You're right. <laughs> So there's, a, there's a dot pi script. Mm -hmm. There's like fly. fly oh, there's the a dot pi. pi. Uh -huh, Are they pulling uh -huh. the, the signal from cell towers on the ground? They're not cell towers specifically. They're uh, they're towers designed Special to do this antenna. from cities. Oh, I was going to say, if you let airline passengers know that balloons can do this, but they can't, man. They <laughs> <laughs> it's going to destroy the navigation. We're going down. Yeah. Look at the. There these are the. Uh, there, uh, that, pause that, that Chad. Pause that. that. These are what you get. This red, it looks like a red Tootsie Pop antenna. <laughs> this is what people in New Zealand who are the first beta testers of this will get. Somebody said it kind of looks like a place pin on Google Maps. No, oh, it does. You think that's it's intentional? 3G level at best, I think, right? Well, yeah. I don't know. Trey was, no. Trey said he was really impressed. It was very fast. Really? Yeah. Oh. So I don't know. I'm trying to hold down expectations. Yeah. I, th I don't know. It is pretty far. I mean, 10 miles is a long way away, and the latency is going to be horrendous. Every time God. I see photos in New Zealand, I always just want to move there. Yeah, I want to be a hobbit when I see photos in New Zealand. Yeah, but not well, yeah. I mean, like the balloon test photos and the videos are just amazing oh, yeah. looking. That's, it's very, what's interesting, and I don't know if it's intentional, it's very near Queenstown, where Trey lives. So he, he and his family drove over and uh, got in the helicopter. He got in the helicopter and, uh, and uh, watched this and made some great movies. You can catch those on stuckincustoms.com. Jeff yep. Levy's writing articles for uh, Wired about this as well. Grr. Better latency than a satellite. That's a good point. I mean, the last satellite has bad latency, but it won't be as bad as that. I mean, the point of this is to get to remote areas that, that just simply can't be covered, and if you have enough balloons up there. You can cover. You, you know, if we can bring internet connectivity to huge swaths of the, of the Earth, imagine what happens. Assuming there's power there. And nobody better to do this than Google. You wouldn't see, there's no extra governmental organization that's going to do this. No NGO. Well, that's the other great thing. If they can put some servers up there, maybe we have, we're safe from the NSA. I think the NSA can even tap the stratosphere. <laughs> um, <laughs> however, you know, it isn't, this is Google's mandate. They've always said this. Uh, the more you use the internet, the more we make. Uh, yep. They might charge for this, but I don't think this would be a business any more than Gigabit is a business for them. This opens up entire new nations yeah. to business. This there is what are they call the last mile problem, right? Yeah, or last like, 10 miles, yeah. Last 10 miles. <laughs> there are uh, 5 billion people who don't have internet access. So you're talking, you know, about a significant increase in your market share. Yeah. Uh, and they're solar powered, which is really cool. Yep. 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 Uh, they then, are set up in such a way that they can take them down when they wear out. They're yeah, they very, wear out. They take them down and they recycle the parts, which yep. is cool. They have landing or collection areas, right, that they that they can steer them to, which is really I wonder neat. how that has to be coordinated with air traffic control, though. That's what... Uh, the up and down. Well, you know, it's not that crowded Well, they're coming down to earth. Yeah. I feel like this is the Leo question, but when can I buy one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Kevin Purdy balloon. There they are going up in uh, New Zealand. This is, uh, is this a, a Trey Reckless video? Yeah, this is one of Trey's videos. The, the one he was talking about with the technical demo still hasn't been approved yet, so it's not up yet. Right. But he apparently was able to go to the staging uh, uh, Quonset hut and record a bunch of tech talks and whiteboard stuff. And he's hoping, Google has to approve it before he can post it, but he's hoping to post it that would give us a lot of more tech information. This is recorded using his Google Class. Yeah, pretty neat, huh? Mm. Oh. Pretty neat. I guess that's his son. I guess he did bring his kids. Yeah. Either that or he's scratching Stephen Levy's hair, which is a little weird. <laughs> no, Levy was on the right. Oh, good. That was his son. Look at that. That's really amazing. These are more robust than weather balloons. They're pretty tough. So is the solar stuff on the top of it and that on the bottom is the transmission piece? I don't know. We'll have to. Uh... Well, from if you look at this photo, it looks like that bottom piece is has the top layer is is solar. Oh, it panel. does. Okay, yes, there you go. Yep, yep, yep. The other neat thing about this is it's a mesh network. 
Right. Right. They connect with each other. The balloons right. connect with each other to do things. And that you need nice. that because most of them are not over these uh, up uplink facilities. Those are in major urban areas. So only one has to be up above above an uplink. They uplink and then it spreads it via mesh to all the other balloons. So that's pretty cool. It's amazing that the 2013 solution to this it looks a lot like what would probably be the 1913 solution. I know. You know what? Yeah. That's really out of the box thinking, and I love it. You know, I just think that's great. I am thrilled, and I think this might actually work. This is, by the way, not uh, the first time people have talked about something like this. Even a few months ago, Google was do saying we're going to do this in Africa. Um, but I've heard of. of remember, somebody was going to do an internet where it was planes that were always up in the air. This was quite a few years ago. Uh, that's, that's too right. expensive, obviously. Well, and, and then oh, yeah, there were, there were airships not long ago. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm not sure why they don't use zeppelins to do this, but I guess this is the same thing, right? <laughs> They're lower down. Yeah, a yeah. little, little less. They need less fuel. Expensive. That's why. Isn't that cool? But it's really cool. It, what strikes me about it is that's a little weird is that it doesn't look very futuristic. I mean, they look like floating garbage bags. <laughs> They're just really long. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I would be like, oh. And remember, That's Bill Gates land uh, in the ocean and choke some fish. You know, <laughs> Bill Gates spent a billion, I think, a billion dollars on Teledesic, which was uh, designed to put low Earth orbit satellites up doing yeah. the same thing. But this is so much more economical. So well, smart. That's great. Harmless science experiment. Is that what it says? Yeah, that's if it crashes. Harmless science experiment. It's harm. Do not. Right. It is not a bomb. It is not from the NSA. Yeah. Well. Maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh because we're scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> you always joke about the thing that most worries you. By the way, uh, this is now confirmed from Microsoft and their uh, Xbox uh, newsroom. Uh, Don Matrick, who is the president of an inter interactive uh, entertainment business, Microsoft is backing down on the most criticized feature of its new Xbox One, which will be out later in the year. They this this is frankly a stunner. I when I first heard this, Jeff Gersberg, uh, Gersenberg from a Giant Bomb broke the story. I didn't believe it. Microsoft will not require an internet connection to play Xbox One games offline. You can set it up and then uh, once get online, and from then on, it will work just like an Xbox 360, you will be able, there will be no limitations, according to Microsoft, to using and sharing games. It will work just as it does today on the Xbox 360. You can lend, resell, gift, and rent disc-based games. Microsoft has, for the second time in living memory, completely backed down. The first time, of course, is Windows 8.1, where they put the desktop back. Uh, what a shocker. I didn't think this was possible. Because, of course, this is all at the behest of publishers. They must have... They must, I mean, they, I guess they have enough cloud to say to electron, uh, EA. Um, well, well, this is how we're going to do it. They were getting a lot of heat from the military, from uh, uh, soldiers. who said, hey, we want to bring this out to, uh, you know, we, we, we oh, love these games during point. our downtime. We don't have internet access in Afghanistan always. Yeah, that's, and that's a big PR problem. PR problem. We're keeping, exactly. we're pe we're keeping the soldiers from right. enjoying our games. Right. Like, that's right. that's a problem. That's a, probably wise of them to backtrack on that. Well, and, and PlayStation was also eating their lunch. Everybody was saying, I'm going to buy a PlayStation. Um, I thought that's breaking news. I thought I'd mention it doesn't really have anything to do with Google. A little bit to do with the cloud. Never bothers us. No, it never stopped us before. <laughs> um... Let's take a break and do the change log. Do we have some good change log stuff today? Let me just. Yeah, oh, we yeah. Got, yeah, we got a couple yeah. of good things. Yeah. Sure. All right. We'll do a change log do in it. a moment. Yeah. Sound the horns. Yeah. Da, da, da. Not yet. We'll give you some time to warm yourself up there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe just a little quiet horn in the back. Put your glass on. Okay, there. That's, there that's all we get. Just to get you in the mood. Does you, do you get nervous when you hear that? I'm sure ready. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by 99designs.com, a great marketplace that brings really talented designers together with people who need graphics, art, design, better looking menus and apps, better looking t shirts. Two, at last count, 232,515 designers are on 99designs.com. Here's what you do you post, they call it a, a contest. You post your contest on 99designs. 
There are 1,952 open contests. That's why there's so many designers there. You go there, and uh, the designers, you say, you say, I need, you know, a T-shirt design. This is what we did, by the way. The designers will submit their specs. You go back and forth. You pick the winner, and uh, you pay that person, and it's very affordable. We paid $199 for our T-shirt design. It's a good one, too. Looks good. Uh, well, love, in fact, love it. Lots of people come in. These are all the, we got some great uh, submissions. That we had our uh, audience vote. 99 Designs paid out $1.7 million to graphic artists last month. A total of 50, almost $55 million. This is a system that works, a marketplace for designers and people who need design. Um, here's how it works. Go to 99designs.com slash twig, and uh, they're going to set you up with a $99 power pack of services for free. The power pack gives you more designer time and attention. 99 Designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design product in their marketplace, your project in their marketplace. You'll get nearly twice as many designs as a result. They also have a great San Francisco-based design team that can work with you to kind of hone your request. And the prices are, are incredible. Logo design starts at $299. Web design, a full website, $599 and up. Landing pages, Facebook cover design, banner ads, infographics, $199 and up. Brochures, flyers, menus, all that print stuff, greeting cards, product packaging even, $199 and up. I, You know what's great about this is bringing great design to the world. Stuff doesn't have to look so bad anymore, thanks to 99designs. We're going to uh, talk to them about, I, uh, Lisa's going to yell at me for saying this, we're, we're going to work on a mobile app for a Twit, but it's not going to be, it's going to be a oh. game. Oh, cool. Ooh. Really? Ooh, yeah. Shh. Don't tell Lisa oh. I said that. <laughs> but 99 Designs is going to help us. We're going to get the design, but they're going to work, work, hook us up with the, uh, the programmers, too. I'll promise it'll be Android as well as I am. They'll do that, too? Yeah, they do it all. They're great. Whoa. 99designs.com. Well, they'll do it for us. I presume they'll do it for you, too. Yes, they will. 800-513-1678. That's a special number just for Twig, Twig listeners. 800-513-1678 or visit them online at our special site, 99designs dot com slash twig ninety nine designs. Yeah, they're really great people. I'm really excited about this, but I don't want to say any more. I am too. I want to ask you questions, and I'm <laughs> training myself. You may not be as excited as it's because not anything that will play back podcasts. That all exists. It's something okay. for fun. No, no I that, that's exciting. Yeah, Gina endorses a, fun. Yeah. yeah, I like fun. <laughs> You'll like this. <laughs> You may even be a character in the game, Ms. Drapani. No In fact, way. I could pretty much guarantee that you will be. Oh, man. Whoa. As will now, you, Mr. I, Jarvis. That's Whoa. very exciting. That's very exciting. Ooh. Now I'm a little worried. Yeah, yeah. 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 I shouldn't say anything because, you know, these, there's many a slip twixt the cup and the lip. But uh, that's our plan anyway. Um. Very intriguing. A link, uh, a link to uh, Major Nelson's blog from our chat room. Very interesting, saying that uh, Major Nelson said we feel like we had to listen. Wow, what a thought! What a your feedback matters. Um, of course, this site is very, very, very slow because everything having to do with this is very, very, very slow right now. Um, that's fascinating. It's great. I, yeah, it's kind Good of unheard of. Um, I encourage you Good to read the us. entire post from Don Matrick for additional details. No regional restrictions. Thank you for your continued support. Larry Herb, Xbox Live's Major Nelson. Wow. That is a big deal. That is a big deal. You don't see big companies like Microsoft turn on a dime like that usually. Not that quickly even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, privacy authorities say Google... You got some splaining to do, in particular with glass. Uh, and a letter addressed to Larry Page, 10 privacy authorities from all over. Who knew there were so many privacy authorities from all over oh, the world? Oh, yeah, there's lots of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and they all got together. Um, and they want their eight questions uh, around well, the guy privacy next issues. Will be wearing these at the ur urinal? Yeah, you know, yeah. The it probably is one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did, did did they send a letter to Mr. Kodak? 
They would if they could. Um, Why are you trying to steal our souls? Stop. Canada? Please discontinue yes, consumer right. development. Pictures? Stop. No! Uh, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Israel, Mexico, Switzerland. Um, Australian Prime Minister uh, Julia Gillard got an up-close look at glass earlier this year. Outspoken Southern Australian Liberal Senator Cory Bernardi labeled glass the end of privacy. Oh, come on. It really is just a camera. Well, you know, that's the thing. It's, yeah, it's a piece of hardware, and they don't even understand that anybody can create software for something. I can make a piece of hardware tomorrow. Well, I couldn't. Yeah. Actually, anyone can make a piece of hardware tomorrow, a camera, and, and, and make it small and do anything with it. It's big, bad, ugly American company time. Right. Yeah, I notice it's not coming from the U.S., they want to know how Glass complies with data protection laws, what privacy safeguards are, what information Google collects through Glass, who that information is shared with, NSA, and whether Google has undertaken a privacy risk assessment. Uh, it's, and then, it's a smartphone on your face. And then they it's, said, it's, it's, exactly. it's different. It's and then they said, on your face. can you come over and show us? <laughs> And by the way, we'd like some. They want to also, test it for themselves. Yes, we'd Can like we to be, be glass explorers, people. please? That's if all. Google just glass, needs to give them some we glasses. Have less misinformation. Right. <laughs> oh, well. Google, uh, Google's head engineer says we're going to be able to live forever within the next 20 years. Ray Kurzweil has been saying this for a while, but now he's well, Google's yeah, head engineer, I'll, right? Holy new until I saw it was Ray yeah. Kurzweil. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I got all excited. You mean somebody besides Ray Kurzweil says this? No, just Ray. <laughs> no, it's Ray. <laughs> it's just Ray. He's, he, his subtitle of his last book was, I want to live long enough to live forever. Um, but you know what? That's fine. I don't care. He's working with somebody to build, who told me this? To build, was it, uh, I think it was Jason, uh, what's his name? Who told me this? <laughs> the guy we had on Triangulation last week. That they're building these robots to pour your brain into. They're working on that. I just want mine to have a six-pack abs. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I ask. Rock-solid thighs. I want to look like uh, the Henry Cavill guy. Google will be offering unlimited music free via Starbucks and Google All Access. Smart move. Mm-hmm. Um, how is it different from, from, yes, it's not, a, it's, a, I, there was, it's, it's not a partnership. It's basically a marketing deal. Right. Coffee is better a, with music. You go into a Starbucks, you log into their usual, yeah. you know, log in here to get online. And, uh, while you're logging in, it'll say like, Hey, you can listen to music unlimited oh, okay. uh, while you're here at Starbucks. So that's pretty much like I, iTunes. Yeah. iTunes yeah. only gives you one or two songs though. Right. Right. Yeah, so they're they're saying you know listen to all the music you want for the two hour slot or whatever you get Wi Fi at a Starbucks. Right. All right, we got the trumpets uh, all warmed up. This would be a good time to play them because it's time for the Google Change Log. The Google Change Log. Gina Trevino has the log. Google has added a carousel of search results for nearby restaurants and bars and other I local places this. to your search res search results. Yeah, it's really, really nice. So if you go to Google.com and you type in a query like uh, Mexican restaurants I tried here in San Diego because there's really good Mexican food here in San Diego, and Google will show a horizontal grid of businesses close to your current location across the top. Um, and uh, you can click on an image or name to drill down. You can also uh, scroll, uh, you, can, you can zero in on an area on the map shown inside the, the, the search results to, to limit the results to, to an area oh, that's on cool. the map. So really let's nice. just get pizza places in yeah. lower Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really nice. <laughs> Little Italy, nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that is cool. Yeah, and this has been, uh, I guess this has been available on, on iPad for ta for tablet users on the iPad for a while, but since this is the first time it's showing up on the desktop and it's rolling out uh, for in English for users based in the U.S. Uh, today, this week. Uh, what else? Google's got a new recent sign-ins area in, 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 your, in your account um, 
in your account area. So if you go to security.google.com, there's a new link, recent activity, and it'll show you a list of your recent sign-ins and other security related actions. If you've made a new you know, application password, if you changed your password, where you signed in from, IP address, what kind of device. So, so it'll say, hey, you signed in from an Android device from California here, Chrome here. Uh, this is this is this feature is kind of similar to Gmail's recent activity feature, but it's not limited to just Gmail. It's whenever and wherever you've logged into your Google account, which is really nice. And, and, and it's cool across the top. It says like, see something here that you don't recognize. You know, here's here's where you can change your password. That is so great. nice little security security enhancement. This was uh, kind of like what was at the bottom of Gmail before, right? Exactly. This yeah. is very similar to Gmail's account activity feature, right. um, which the, the Gmail feature is nice because if you've enabled, uh, you know, if, if you've given an app access to your Gmail, like via IMAP, so, and, and it's kind of constantly accessing it, you can kind of see that like automated, you know, requests. Right. Uh, which is nice, but this is sign in. This is this is general account sign in, not just email. Well, for instance, it tells you when you create application specific passwords. Yeah. So I did one on June second, and I can even see where I was because there's a dot on the map. I can mm -hmm. see what the application was for, you know, what I named it, and I can click manage and delete it if I want. That is really great. Yeah, it's boy, nice. everybody nice. should do this. That is fabulous. Yeah. Nice transparency yeah. about what's going on with your account. Especially if you if you're concerned that uh, there's been unusual activity, uh, Google's also added 18 new languages for Drive, Docs, Sheets, and Slides, bringing up the total to 65, including um, uh, Hong Kong Chinese, Estonian, Canadian French, Icelandic, uh, Zulu, Swahili. Majority of languages supported by the built-in spell checker, and users can switch back and forth between languages. You can also collaborate on Drive files in one language while your fellow collaborator collaborators use another. Just Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Another Google Drive update, you can print uh, Google Forms. I love Google Forms. I feel like it's this really undersung, like super handy way to collect data uh, into a spreadsheet. Now, if you create a form online for people to fill out with drop downs and radio buttons and text boxes and text fields, you can hit the print button and Google will create a printable form that makes it that's easy for people to fill out on paper so you can see there chat's Ooh. got it up on screen so you can see what the online form looks like and then the, the digital form is, is nice to fill in as well this will be i think really good for for, for students and uh, and uh in school and finally this is not a user thing but i thought it was kind of fun it's kind of if it's a developer thing google's announced sneaker nets uh for developers who want to use google cloud storage if you've got a hard drive full of so much data that'll take too long to transfer it over the internet you can mail them your hard drive <laughs> this you is the technology share. they perfected for the nsa obviously yeah. <laughs> yeah. To share with the world <laughs> So if you're a developer and you've got a ton of data you want to import to Google Cloud Storage, you ship them your hard drive. It's got to be from a U.S. address. And for 80 bucks per hard drive, Google will take the drive and upload the data into Cloud Storage for you. Uh, this, Google says, can be faster or less expensive than transferring data over the Internet. This is a limited preview, and uh, it's just for users with U.S.-based addresses. So, you know, sneaker net, FedEx, FedEx your data to Google. Now you can actually do that. But that was kind of fun. That's all I got. That's the change log. And that's what's new from Google. Noam Chomsky says Google Glass is Orwellian, ridiculous, and destroys people. In an, After it emasculates you. <laughs> in an interview with Laura Flanders on Grit TV, he says uh, it's also uh, recording as a camera and a recorder, which means everything that's going on around you goes up on the Internet. And of course, that's wrong. It's wrong. And this is a guy who hangs out at MIT. You think better. He ought to know better. Uh, obviously not paying that much attention. But I think that that's the knee-jerk reaction of a lot of people to glass. Um, is, uh, you know, it's spying on me. And the truth is, who the hell cares if Google's spying on you now? Now we know we've really got a problem. Exactly. It's the gov it's a government. It's the government. The government fancies itself the protector of privacy. The government is our worst threat right. to privacy. That's the bad one. You know, if Google wants to uh, know what I'm doing so it can serve me ads, that's commerce. That is not nearly as scary as being in prison for the rest of my life because the government's decided I'm an enemy. I also know it. I also consent to that, and I can I can, I can withdraw my consent, and I and you can't. Yeah, go ahead and try to withdraw your consent from the government <laughs> spying on da you. David Drummond uh, went into the lion's den, Google this afternoon right before the show, and uh, did a Q and A there, 
the links up on, on the rundown and just said straight, you know, he just had to repeat the same time. I'm sorry you're disappointed. It's not really us. The problem you have was with the law. And one of the favorite things was, are you lying about anything? Are you forced to lie about anything? And he said, no. But, but, but he could be lying about whether he can not, lie. Yeah, lying about lying, right? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, there's no way to know whether or not they're lying because they're legally right. obligated to lie. Well, but, Apple released a very strongly worded uh, statement on its website this week in which they said, we cannot see what you're doing on FaceTime. We cannot. It's encrypted, and only you have the keys on, uh, on messages, on iMessage. We can't see it. Um, but that doesn't really matter because. So for me to ask you, Leo, what would what 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 would stop now Google from saying we're going to make it a priority to encrypt everything we can encrypt? I don't think it even matters. I mean, there, for one thing, people don't understand that. Uh, and one of, and the big question that's raised by this uh, Apple statement is it does seem as if Apple can uh, unencrypt the stuff for you when you get a new system, for instance. So there's some question about what Apple can and cannot do. Uh, and um, but but even OK, let's say Apple's telling the truth. Um, as we well know, the metadata could be even more valuable, not what you're saying, but whom you're talking to. Right. And uh, well, the and, metadata is what enables them to make a specific warrant request. Right. Um, I, I think it's I think it's to me, it's extremely clear that the U.S. government is now saving all electronic transmissions. By the way, that's probably true of other governments as well. The U.K. government, I'm sure, is doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's why they're not screaming. What is yeah, you don't hear anything from the U.K., do you? They're, they're, they're in cahoots on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're, they're recording everything. Whether they're sifting through it or not is not known. Uh, well, if it's if encrypted... UK, if the U.K. ever offers you a cup of coffee, say no because it means listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> if, it's in, if it's encrypted, they can't, probably can't see into it as long as you're using open source encryption. And this is the other problem is that there are backdoors, I'm pretty sure there are backdoors into uh, closed source encryption technologies from a lot of big companies. So uh, assume that you are being uh, spied upon and that, uh, you know, I mean, I, I would encrypt, but I don't, I don't know if even that's enough because the metadata is so valuable. Uh, it, it, you know, so who cares if Google's spying on me? <laughs> that's the least um, of our worries, right? Drummond said, there's no gun to my head. I'm not lying. Yeah, Just no, I believe this. Said, yeah. He says, uh, Google you know. does not give the NSA unfettered access to user data. We talked about this last week. They don't need to. No. The NSA can get it upstream. Right. And Period. it has been absolutely clear, too, that, that they can't make a direct query to the server. That's now the NSA had said it. Now Google's everybody said it. It, it. Google isn't legally bound to lie about anything. He says, no, no gun to my head. Um, he chose what questions to answer. So, Gina, partly in answer to your uh, question is there's a huge raft of questions. If he felt he couldn't have answered the question, he would have answered, would not right. have answered. Right, right. And and they could be honest if they, you know, he could have said, I'm obligated, I can't answer this question right. because there is, you know, I, I'm, yes. not, I'm not allowed to, right? He could have said that. It's fine. Um, I believe that. I don't, I completely believe that they're not giving yeah. uh, access. Why would they? Unless absolutely compelled to. Um, However, uh, that, that there's plenty of ways that uh, this information can be gathered without any cooperation on Google's part or even knowledge on Google's part. Nobody's asking Cogent and Level 3 and the other, or, you know, or, or AT&T exactly or Verizon right. or Sprint. Nobody's asking them. Ask them. I quoted Steve Gibson in The Guardian this week saying that that's the question that still has to be asked. Yeah. Hasn't been asked. Why aren't they asking those guys? Are you, you know, who, find out who Google's uh, upstream provider is and ask them. Are you, is, does the NSA have access to your servers? The other issue, Snowden appeared on a Guardian Q&A, and I'm, I'm not, it was a heavy on rhetoric, I think a little on specifics, and I'm not confident direct operational knowledge he has. Right. I think he read the PowerPoint like we did. Right. He still alleges, though, that it's really, really bad. There is direct access. The NSA is recording right. everything, that the coast companies are lying, right? I mean, he he said that their their language was was the same, and that's because he they were all lying. He back some, but he, yeah, he said that they're still prevaricating and that kind of stuff, but he didn't say how. Um, you know, I'm glad we're having this discussion, but I'm not sure how much faith I have in him as a direct source and expert. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting to see how the companies are now using this as a, 
a way to prove how committed they are to privacy, right? I mean, just what you said, Leo. I mean, yeah. they're, they're basically saying, uh, look, it's not us. We're not the ones you have to worry right. about. Worry about these people. Look, and and and, and then Google, uh, Google filed. They tried to get. Oh, I don't they're wanna, asking I don't for a. They filed, uh, they filed with the FISA court. They right. revealed right. they filed a motion with the FISA court. They already filed with the DA. They say, let us release the number. Uh, and now they filed with the FISA court saying it's a matter of their First Amendment freedom. Free speech. Yeah, right. they're, they're citing free speech. To be able to talk about their court requests. Is that yeah. what they're asking for? Yes. Because yeah. they want to break down. They, you know, as, as they said, when Facebook released its numbers, it was a step back for users because the Facebook numbers included local law enforcement. Uh, as well as, you know, federal yeah. law enforcement. And I, I, when I worked with local sites, believe me, the number of chicken poop uh, subpoenas that came out, oh, yeah. oftentimes they were local cop chiefs and sheriffs who were mad about underlings who, who, who anonymously complained about them in forums. And we, that, yep. was, that was the, the major volume of our subpoenas. Wow. So that penny stuff is now mixed in with true federal invasion of some measure of privacy we don't know, and it's a meaningless, meaningless release of data. Well, uh, I, I'm sure that the FISA court will laugh in Google's face, but uh, Google, I think what Google well, realizes is... A FISA action is public. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, at least if nothing happens, we'll know the FISA said no. Whether they'll right, release a public we'll ask ruling. What happened and We'll either say they said no, or we're not allowed to say, which is right. they said no. Right. We'll know they said no. Um, yeah. The real the reason they're doing this though is 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 a little uh, self serving because it it's hurting Google, it's hurting Facebook, it's yeah. hurting Microsoft. People are sur assuming that these companies are spying on them, and it's just it's one more challenge uh, to these companies, uh, and so they're trying to be proactive. But I would, again, assert that this isn't the issue. People are really focused on the wrong thing. Yep. So Microsoft and Facebook have published the numbers, the FISA numbers. No. And they've published aggregate numbers. Aggregate numbers. And that's okay. the problem. You can't break down. Law enforcement. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so it, that okay. includes people looking for lost phones. It includes people whose you know, parents are, are, have Alzheimer's and have disappeared. It includes all sorts of stuff. And, you can, okay. and it's not broken down. Yeah, I local see. cops and so that's going after Google's drug asking. dealers, stuff right, like that. Right, right. Chiefs of police who don't like what people said about them in Forbes, that kind of thing. 18,000 right. accounts from Facebook over right. a six-month period. It's actually a smaller number than I thought. Oh, I, huh, that's, a big, that's a big to me. To I suppose relative to Facebook's whole population, it's, it's small. Yeah. Microsoft was 31,000 accounts over the same six-month period. That's a, that's a lot. That seems like a lot. But I well, guess when, you, when you're lumping together Gina. all the little stuff, right. it's not as big. Right. But what surprises me there is that people had enough interactions with Microsoft versus oh, Facebook. You would think Facebook would be more valuable. But let me let me just yeah. let me just emphasize again that they're in my opinion, this is pure opinion. They're collecting everything. Those subpoenas, those requests for information, are just when they've got a criminal investigation going on, and now they want to know all this data we have. Who's that? And so that doesn't happen that much. It, that's that's not the limit of how much data they're gathering. That's right. merely the better they are at the collection and analysis of the raw data. Right. Fewer subpoenas they're going to be. Right. That's merely the number of people they want to take the next step on, and we want to actually physically identify them. Yep. Mm. Um, so I don't think that info. So what? Uh, if 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 it's five thousand, that's not relevant because I believe they're collecting all of our information, yours, mine, and everybody else's. Right. That's what's relevant. And the thing I'm most scared about, I mentioned this on security now, is not now, but the future. What if they decide, what if they decide that they, they just really don't like Leo Laporte and they got me on something, you know? Um, now's the time that they go and they say, well, let's look what else we got. And they go back in time through everything else they've been collecting over the last few years or five years or who knows, it could be 10 years. It really is only limited by the five zettabytes of storage that they have. Which is, but by the way, five billion terabytes. But the discovery. Well, here, here's the, here's the, the two sided edge. The discovery. Your attorney would 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 say, how did you get this data, and is this um, allowable in court? No, because it's um, a uh, it's a secret action. That's the problem. Is when that answer comes back, and then you become gagged about that. Right. right? But you would know it personally. I would know personally, but I could never tell you. 
Well, if you look at what they oh, did, you know, like you could ever keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to jail, and probably not a yeah. jail around here. And sometimes it's not the things that they use in court or the things right. that they actually press on people. It's the things that they collect, and then the agencies themselves use them to pressure people. Right. I mean, if you read that book about um, Jeff, might know it. The book that just came out, and it was the journalists' like 40-year crusade to get the FBI's investigation into left-wing groups on the west side, on the west coast. Oh right, I um, forget the title of it, but yeah. Yeah, so um, they wouldn't necessarily tra press charges or anything. They just use all this information they gather to to send letters to people and say, you know, hey. Maybe your wife finds out about the affair. Or maybe she doesn't. Maybe she right. quit Greenpeace. You know, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, Are you watching The Americans now? No, I hear it's quite good, though. I haven't been. Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it'll only uh, uh, stoke your paranoia, Leo. Well, speaking of uh, the Soviet Union, it was uh, Joseph Stalin's uh, chief of secret police, uh, Barry, I remember him, who said, find yeah. me the man and I'll find you the crime. And I think that that's exactly what this is all about, to be honest with you. And, you know, I mentioned this, but according the Department of Justice uh, uh, interprets the Electronic Crimes Act uh, in such a strict... Look what they did with Aaron Schwartz. They said, oh, you know, we're going to give... It's a federal crime to violate a website's term of service, which it is. That's how they interpret it. Uh, so if you violate... You know, be careful when you violate websites' terms of service. It's being recorded, and someday they may be using that against you yeah aaron's really that's a really good example perfect example mm -hmm. yep. wah, wah. so i don't care if google wants to give me targeted ads for crying out loud <laughs> 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 really are you worried about that by the way it is the 10th anniversary of adsense two million publishers earned seven is this one of your numbers seven billion dollars wow. last year via adsense wow so, uh, so Google Plus two years old, AdSense is ten years old. Pretty cool. I made, I've made, I don't know, I was making a thousand dollars a month from AdSense for many, many uh, months. Oh, that's my, pretty good on my blog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my it was a radio show website and the blog. It's not, you know, I'm going to Vegas money, but it's it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. I think that's really, maybe in some ways, AdSense's most important thing is, it, uh, you know, a little pocket money, a little support for blogs, for smaller yeah. blogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. It's a very easy way to do that. Well, and, 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 and the argument I always make about AdSense is that is the publisher would have tried to control the scarcity. Google found a way to exploit yeah. and grow an abundance. Yeah. And it wanted more ads and more places, and that's the essence of AdSense. So credit, I think a lot of credit over the last 10 years to the growth of the blog Blogosphere, the blog economy, is, goes to AdSense. Uh, Meanwhile, Tom Bro Brokaw today went on complaining about how the worst thing to happen is the growth of the blogosphere. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst generation. Oh, yeah. E-Marketer e uh, says Google made, more, made half of all worldwide mobile internet ad revenues last year. Uh, yeah, it's e only just begun. It's only just begun. Yeah, that, it, doesn't, that doesn't surprise me at yeah. all. $8.8 .8 billion in mobile ads last year um google about 4.61 billion this is an estimate google's not not saying facebook considerably less by the way facebook which had no mobile revenue in 2011 uh tripled it uh to over two billion dollars in 2013 still less than half what google made but they're turning around mobile yeah facebook i bet is going to shoot up in the next few years Oh, yes. They already yeah. are. I mean, 333% increase from year yeah. to year. Yeah. Yeah, they're just they're playing catch up. Um, what do you think? Actually, I've been meaning to ask you of the new Twitter analytics stuff. It's not so much new, but it's just it's made of all of us now, right, Gina? We can see it. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. I, you know, I, I, it, so they opened it up to everyone, right? I yep. had seen it a while yep. back, um, and I think it's I think it's good. I think it's charts. I mean, I think it's, you know, kind of like yeah. it's an analytics dashboard uh, for... It's personal porn. <laughs> What's that? It's, it's, yeah. it's personal porn. <laughs> it's personal porn. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time, obviously, thinking about analytics with with, uh, with ThinkUp. And, you know, much like Google Analytics, I, this is the kind of thing that I would, like, look at every once in a while and be like, yay, charts. Uh, but not necessarily maybe look at all the time. I mean, every day I'm not thinking like, oh, you know, like let, let me let, let me check my charts. Um, we, you know, with ThinkUp, we've been trying to 
kind of move away from the dashboard um, the dashboard format and move toward kind of more of a narrative notification style. So, hey, here's something that you should actually look at. Um, I think it's great though that Twitter opened this up to everyone, and um, I think it's I think like like it's I think it's a good start. I think it's a really I think it's a good start. I think that it's good to offer these kind of tools to to, to anyone versus just the you know the celebrities or the brands. And there's a reason they do it because as soon as I went to it, it said, "Welcome to Twitter advertising, Leo Laporte. How would you like to promote your tweets?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Where do I get the a analytics? I've got a. <laughs> I want the. An oh, here we go. No, how do I get the analytics? I want to see this. Where <laughs> all I got was a come on, for uh, so I went to so you can my on. profile analytics. Tell us who you'd like to target. <laughs> uh, how much do you want to spend? How do you want to pay? What, how do you get there, Gina? <laughs> yeah, I'm well, signing in right now. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, you have to go through a whole OAuth, which is odd because... Because it's a, yeah. It's a it's Twitter, Twitter site, uh -huh. but... That's fair. Signing in. Because oh. I saw a Sarah's analytics. They looked really cool with the kind of swoopy doopy graphs and stuff. Yeah, I can swoopy see that. Swoopy doopy graphs. So you didn't get... So maybe it's just me they're trying to get money out of. <laughs> I, I am on... The top. I'm on a different computer. Click, and click I analytics know. at the top. You got to sign into yeah. the ads.twitter.com. And then uh, after you get in through Twitter, it's a uh, analytics tab at the top. Right on the top of the page. Uh, yeah. And this is what I get. Welcome to Twitter advertising. <laughs> no. Look at my page. They turned Help it me. off. Maybe it was, maybe it was a false report. Maybe I didn't get it. So I'm at my analytics. And you say there's a tab up here that. And not a tab, but it's, yeah, it's right next to home. See, if I tap page. analytics. Analytics, yeah. this is what I get. Welcome to Twitter advertising. Maybe I just don't have it yet. Well, you don't. Maybe I'm just unlucky. I wonder how much it would cost. Let me just see. Uh, choose the location. I'm going to say people in the United States. Uh, add usernames, people of similar followers. I want to have the same people who follow Ashton. Oh, wait a minute. He's <laughs> A plus K. Okay. A plus K. Yeah, I'm going to have those people. 21 million. Now we're talking. Okay. Um, you can limit it to desktop, iOS, Android, Black... No, let's uncheck BlackBerry. I really don't want to advertise to BlackBerry users. Uh, any gender? No, I want I want the ladies. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to promote? Okay. Love me, love me. Say <laughs> that you love me. This is my promoted tweet. On the days where I have the most replies, I have the most unfollows. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Skip promoting tweets for now. Good. I like to skip it. How much do you want to spend? <laughs> Zero? <laughs> Zero. Is that an this option? Is weird. Why is it having you? Okay. Well, apparently, uh, did you, are you getting analytics? Is somebody else getting analytics? You I are, Chad. Yeah. Show us yours. I'm getting the same exact same You're thing. You're getting, they want you to spend money I, too. Huh? I tried to click the get help button, but that, that get didn't help. help in get billing help. history account. Hit me. Hit me. View my post. I am having trouble signing in. I'm gonna yeah, the two most right. popular things I've written about really recently has been uh, chicken wings and XKCD. So <laughs> <laughs> people <laughs> love that. Expert. People love that. Well, I don't know. Anyway. I'm gonna stick to Think Up now. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to Think Up. That's the <laughs> yeah. way to do it. You really want to know? Trust let's Gina. All stick. With yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like Fred Wilson it says Twitter's loss of Instagram to Facebook was an enormous, huge mistake. Can you imagine that board meeting? Yeah. He's on the board at uh, Twitter? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. He's going to spank Dick Costello. Um, but I think he's probably right, don't you? I mean, Instagram is yeah, the social if, network. if Twitter had had Instagram, it would have been, would have killed Facebook. Would have been better than Facebook. Yeah, that's why yeah. Facebook, that's why Mark Zuckerberg personally said, he's, you know, I'm going to negotiate with Kevin Systrom. I'm going to get this company. I don't care if it costs me a billion dollars, and it did. And then, of course, uh, Twitter bought Vine, re realizing they'd made a mistake. But now... Vine didn't, uh, Vine didn't quite do it? No, Vine's... I think Vine is uh, growing faster than Instagram at this point. The kids love Vine. <laughs> Seriously. I watch the kids. I'm looking at the kids. <laughs> I've been told I have to stay 500 feet away, but I'm I'm 
<laughs> so uh, no, I'm just I watch my kids and they and they have moved. They were big Instagram users. Now they do Vine all the time. But Instagram supposedly in the next few days is going to put video on Instagram. Yeah. Mm. So uh, Zuckerberg, I think Zuckerberg out outplayed uh, Twitter on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good move. Well played, sir. Uh, Facebook's going to offer free Wi-Fi, though. This is cool. You, you just got to say where you are. Yeah, all you have to do is check in at the places that offer uh, this, and apparently it will be more and more. And, What's uh, clever about that is that it's a really, it's a get for the venue. Right. The venue as well, yeah. Yeah, you know, they get free internet. And the venue uh, learns about yeah. its customer. You know, Xfinity's been doing this, uh, you know, Comcast. There is, uh, at, at least here in uh, Northern California, there are Xfinity hotspots everywhere. Uh, everywhere. And uh, you can't check in, though. Uh, you have to be a Comcast uh, customer. That's right. Yes, but, but you have to check the venue. You don't have to say where you are. I mean, it knows where you are. The right. NSA knows where you are. Yeah. But you don't have to say, hello, I'm at, at Leo's Coffee Shop. Right. 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 Uh, it, this Facebook thing, uh, Cisco is going to build it into the Meraki routers. Meraki is an interesting story because it was originally a mesh router public Wi-Fi play. Uh, that was ah. was very cool, and the idea was you buy this Meraki router, and it has mesh capabilities, and you know basically it was to kind of do a grassroots global Wi-Fi effort, and I guess they they pivoted a little bit, Cisco bought them, but now they're kind of back to their roots in some ways because they're talking about building this Facebook Wi-Fi in Meraki, so it wouldn't necessarily just be Joe's Java Hut, it could be uh, could be Leo's house, although most people with Meraki I guess it went by it for business. Okay. I'm still trying to get in analytics. <laughs> got very Sorry, quiet. I don't mean to got be very quiet, quiet in here. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying. We're going to wrap it up here in a minute. Um, Every time it's quiet, I think my my connection in the hotel has gone down. <laughs> I'll go like this. <laughs> so you yeah, know get, you're always online. Look, I'm Terry. In. I get charts. I have charts. You got I, charts. I get, How did you get the charts? I did. I just signed in. Uh, I signed just, in I'm, analytics, and you got charts. Yeah, yeah. Analytics at Twitter.com. Yep. I got charts. So what is it about me and Chad? Did you go to ads.twitter.com, Leo? No, I should go to ads.twitter.com? That's what oh. you've got to do. Yeah. I went to analytics. Foolish me. No, I... go to ads.twitter.com and click on the analytics link. <laughs> That's bizarre. So, okay, so I went to analytics.twitter.com. I think. That's what I did. I get a funny oh. little uh, dialogue. No, I still get welcome to Twitter advertising. <laughs> You're using ad block. Please disable yeah. your ad block before oh. you join us. Are you using ad Oh, we probably do that on the... On yeah, the we do that on the production Production computers. <laughs> I would like to buy ads using ad By the way, that's a federal offense to use ad block. You're violating uh, terms oh, of service. Oh, no, they're going to get gonna me. Gonna pre Pre-crime. Pre-crime. Yes, if I go to ads.twitter.com, on the top there is a link to analytics and I get in. I think I've just not yet uh, included in the fun. Which is, I want, it's a mistake that they made, but the, but the, they've always offered this, they bought ads. Right. <laughs> I got to say, I got the same thing. Oh, Burke's saying now go to nsa.twitter.com. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. That's a different kind That'll of analytic. That'll give me my analytics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some good news. I, uh, I presume that a lot of owners of Galaxy S4 will be getting this update eventually. I have the unlocked international uh, Exynos uh, version, but, um. This morning, uh, and the word went out a, a couple of weeks ago they were going to do this, uh, but this morning I got an update pushed. I was pleased because I had already rooted this thing because I was getting so frustrated by the camera crashing. It unrooted me, but it but on the bright side, it's the camera stopped crashing. It's updated the camera firmware. Apparently, uh, they added, uh, according to Kevin Tuffel, they added uh, HDR video, which I haven't seen, and they did add, and I found this, a move to SD card in the app manager so you can... Because they're so, uh, these 16 gigabyte uh, Galaxy S4s are so constrained for memory. Uh, I only have a gig left. Because they, uh, they have a lot of stuff on it to begin with. Yeah, you only. Like, yeah, and that's another thing. Apparently, they've compre they, this is a little smaller. The firmware is a little smaller, so um, you get something like eight or nine free gigabytes, which I immediately filled up. So, <laughs> and and you know you can't only move so much to the SD card, unfortunately. All right, I think we're uh, we're uh, gonna get ready for our uh, tool of the week, our tip of the week, Jeff, a number of the week. Got one. All right. 
And I bet you we can get uh, we can talk to Mr. Purdy, get something from him. Maybe something cool. Uh, yeah. Maybe okay. Uh, but first, a word from Shutterstock.com. Twenty. I can't. You know, every time I go to Shutterstock, the number goes up. I should see what it is now. Last time I checked, it was twenty-six million high-quality stock photos, videos, vector graphics, illustrations. Shutterstock is really sweet. It's really an amazing place uh, for people who are looking for images uh, for their blog, for their production. When we had Jason Silva on last week, he does those shots of awe on YouTube. They use a lot of Shutterstock video clips in there. They're gorgeous looking. Uh, and it's royalty free. It's uh, And the prices are great. In fact, you could buy a package of images or do what I do and get the uh, subscription. I get 25 images a day. It's great for blogging. Uh, there are 10,000 new images every day, so every time you'll visit, you'll find something new. And the, and the, really, the great thing about Shutterstock is the search engine, an amazing search engine, which allows you not only to search for subject matter, so we'll do Android. I could search for subject matter by, oh, I don't know, emotion, happy Android. Let's see what I get. Are we going to get happy Androids? Yes, there's a happy Android right there. <laughs> He looks so happy. <laughs> Here's a happy Android user or something. Uh, there she is. Oh, I'm a happy Android user. So you can also uh, view by category. So we can have abstract animals, the arts, backgrounds, textures. I can go with the color wheel. It's so fa fantastic because you can actually choose a color. Um, so if you want to say, you know, I only want uh, green Androids. You can do that. And that's great if you've got a palette. Sign up for a free account today, and you can start uh, sharing uh, and saving your images via their light boxes. I mean, it's a great way to store, imp uh, you know, uh, inspirational uh, images and, and share them with your uh, colleagues and friends. Really great search tools. Really great. And take a look at the iPad app, too. Webby Award winning. Shutterstock.com. They're a truly global company with offices all around the world, including Germany and China and Italy and Brazil and Belgium and on and on and on. They travel as much as Jeff Jarvis does. Try it today. Sign up for a free account. You don't need a credit card. Just start using it. But once you decide you want to buy, uh, may I suggest you use our offer code TWIG and the number 6. All new accounts will receive 30% off any package. That is amazing. TWIG 6 to get 30% off right up front. Shutterstock.com. We thank them so much for their support of uh, this week in Google. Let us get a tip from Gina Trapani. So, okay, this isn't the biggest news in the world, but last week we were talking a little bit about iOS 7 and how you can swipe up that one finger swipe up to bring up Control Center. And I think I was complaining about how Android, you have to pull down the notification shade and then tap the button to flip it to, to the quick toggle settings. Several people told me over the week and reminded me of this, of <laughs> again this and shortcut. Again. Jeter, yes. jeter, jeter. <laughs> you two finger swipe down on oh. Android to get to your quick, your quick toggle settings. Uh -oh. uh, so so it's one of those things not very, very discoverable, but once you remember that you can do that, it's really nice. I've been using it all week. So two fingers swipe down, it goes directly to quick toggle. Uh, so iOS 7 doesn't have a link up on Android with Control Center. There you <laughs> I, go. I, I retract my original statement. Thank you to the 675 people who <laughs> mentioned that to me this week. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. You can't really make a mistake on these shows. It's really... <laughs> God, it's annoying. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's, no, it's, it's good, good to uh, keep us it was honest. it was a humbling Thursday last week. Yeah. So <laughs> I just wanted to make that correction. Jeff <laughs> Jarvis, fine. your number of the week. Well, I found this interesting. I had to do a lot for numbers this week, but the LA school system has agreed to spend thirty million dollars for iPads for the schools at a cost of six hundred seventy eight per higher than retail because it has some software involved. And sorry for, you know, being Mr. Chrome guy, but I really wonder whether, and they specifically say, boy, a lot of these are going to have to get keyboards, and that's not included. Aye. Wouldn't um, $200 Chromebooks have been a better investment? Yes. <laughs> yes. Unless they have apps that are specific, you know, iOS-specific apps that they want to use. There's a lot, of, a lot of educational apps on iPad. Well, teaching kids yeah, how to jailbreak thing, iPads. The web, <laughs> It really depends on what they're doing with them and, you know, what grades. I think for the lower grades, maybe. Uh, I mean, if all you need is a browser. But, um, well, even for the lower grades, there's a lot of iOS apps. I don't know. Yeah, it's the web. 
And there's, t well, but it's not, but that's, iPad is not the web. That's the point. The iPad has uh, these, these amazing textbooks that are not websites. Um, they have lots of apps. I would presume that they looked at that. I know you love Chromebooks, but uh, they don't do well, everything. Well, no, just yet. the price. I'm not, I'm not suggesting they get the $1,500 model, but the, the $200 model. Right. And you get a full computer. No, you don't. You get a browser. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. You don't get a full computer, again. Jeff. You can't install applications in your Chromebook. Wow, look well, at that's time. better for a school system's happy. The <laughs> iPad is closer to a full computer than the Chromebook is by a long shot. You can install apps on it. You know, he kicks me when I when I when I have jet lag and I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm not kicking you, uh, but but there is a difference. Uh, you cannot install apps. You can install Chrome extensions, and, and they are very keyboard. severely limited. If you look at the variety and choice of apps on the iPad, three quarters of a million. There's a big difference, and if they, if any of those apps are apps, you know, uh, for I'll give you an example. Uh, autistic uh, kids have great results using the iPad and software design, especially for them, that's just absolutely not available on a Chromebook. Uh, they, I can go on and on and on and on. And you would. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you want to teach Python, you probably should get a Chromebook. I agree. Uh, and I and I admit that there is a lot. It's a lot less administrative hassle in the, to have a Chromebook, but but I think that it's not unreasonable to say, hey, if you're if you got a school, you you need to be able to install some apps. Boy, that's a thirty year bond. Seven hundred thousand kids in this school district will be getting them. That's amazing. Hmm. I mean, they could have saved money by giving them an abacus too, Jeff. It doesn't mean it will do everything they needed to do. Oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> Man. Okay. okay. <laughs> seven hundred bucks per. Seven hundred bucks. It's expensive. Uh, I agree, but it's cheaper than a computer. Yeah. I mean, I well, don't you know. You just if, said it is a computer. I'm not saying that they should. I'm not saying that they should buy iPads either. Um, no, I think it's. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. It's it's going for the sex appeal. Yeah. I mean, you might they you might make a strong case that they could have bought Android tablets. Um, that too. Mm -hmm. Save money by buying Nexuses. Uh, they're going to pay for iPads for 30 years. <laughs> they're still paying that bond in 30 years. Yeah. And they're <laughs> it's like Homer Simpson says in Tapped Out, man, are you going to be happy you bought that in the years to come? <laughs> 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 uh, Mr. Kevin Purdy, you got something for us? Yeah. Um, I like Chromebooks. I really do. Um, I really do. So Good. I have a Chromebook. Uh, I use Chromebooks all the time, and um, I use them late at night to write articles that should have been turned in the day before. Uh, <laughs> and in I, I use on my uh, regular desktops and stuff uh, apps like uh, Flux, F.LUX, uh, which, interestingly enough, was made by a guy who works on Picasa. Uh, apps like Flux, they change the color temperature of your screen so that when you're up late at night, you're not blasting oh, your eyeballs with neat. kind of daylight-tuned um, – yeah, daylight tuned light, and and Gina probably can tell you programmers also have issues with staying up late and looking at monitors and getting that kind of keep you awake stuff. But the reason I'm telling you about f.lux is that in the Chrome store there is a uh, extension called uh, glux or g.lux, and it is a Chrome extension that basically mimics that kind of color tuning. So you install it, and then it puts a button in your toolbar, and basically you click it and you choose what color temperature you want whatever web page you're looking at to be. Uh, tungsten, halogen, daylight, black, white, fluorescent, uh, things like that. So um, you might have to refresh the page after you set it, but basically uh, any web page you're looking at uh, will be recolored to be kind of more nighttime and, uh, you know, low light friendly. So I, I like it because it's one of those apps that uh, kind of mimics desktop functionality inside of a Chrome or you know, Chrome OS environment. So help me. Wow, this is cool. You could so you adjust it for your lighting for day and night. It knows yep. your location, so it knows when day and night is. Yep. Oh, and cool. you know, generally tungsten and halogen have worked the best. The others are kind of wonky, but um, you know, you can experiment with it. See if you like a that. color. <laughs> color. I mean, you might not want to use that in the middle of the day, but if it's late at night. Uh, it definitely helps. Make the sunset on this uh, on this desktop wallpaper. Oh. <laughs> Wait, Kevin, that's I think the stars so are coming out. Holy cow! 
With the Chrome version, Kevin, it's just an uh, extension. Yes. I think the problem you're yes. having with your eyesight is the Dayglow green walls behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is my uh, Twitter account. Oh, okay. um, and so I've changed it using the, the thing to, like, say, fluorescent and save it. And oh, I you, see. You made it. You made it. I couldn't figure out why you were showing your Twitter account. Right. And so, I get it. Okay. And so yeah. now, yeah, this is using the Chrome extension. Yeah, you're right. There is some weird ones. So, but halogen, you know, so tungsten is probably the best. Yep. If you want to really do something see. nice. I like it. So it's great for Chromebook users and great for those who, who are just using, you know, Chrome in the web late at night or, you know, in low light conditions. <laughs> The stark white of the Google homepage won't shock your system anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Only my college roommates in college had had this. It would, I would have saved so many hours of sleep. I can set it to candlelight. <laughs> it's candlelight. Um, I'm going to do a number, Jeff Jarvis. How about that? Not only am All I going right. to poo-poo your pixel, but I'm going to give you a number. $403 million. That's how much... Stratasys just paid to buy MakerBot. Whoa. Stratasys, I think, makes big industrial 3D uh, printers. It's been around for a long time. And MakerBot, of course, everybody knows, is uh, Brie Pettis' uh, plucky little personal 3D Brie. printer Good for company. Brie. Good for wow. Brie. Big exit. $403 million for the uh, MakerBot. So that's, that is pretty awesome. Uh, it's a stock... Swap stock for stock transaction. MakerBot will be the consumer and desktop market, while Stratus Stratasys will continue to focus on industrial 3D printing. So, revolutionizing the way that we make products in the future. 403 million uh, Instagram, a billion. Hmm. Yeah, I think MakerBot might be worth more, huh? But it's not used by as many people. I mean, you're really buying the users, aren't you? Yep. Uh, when you buy Instagram, and you're trying to save yourself. Save yourself, Mark Zuckerberg. Save yourself. Thank you for joining us. I want to thank uh, uh, Gina Trapani for smarterware.org and think up the best Twitter analytics program you can get. Oh, thank so you. Thank there. you. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. To do Leo. text. And of course, the host of All About Android every Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Along with Jason and uh, Ron Richards. Mm hmm. We, did a, we do a little Android talk in here, but it's nothing compared to all about Android. It's a must-watch. Yeah, we get to really dive in, in, a, in on Tuesday nights. Kevin Purdy, thank you for being here. The Complete Guide to Android is still online at completeandroidguide.com. Yep, and you can follow me on Twitter at, at Kevin Purdy, where I tweet about all the stuff I'm writing lately. I, I don't know why I thought your Twitter account was the Purd Man. No, that's my website. Ah, but, uh, that's what it I'm is. I'm at Kevin Purdy, where I'm tweeting about all the weird video game, coffee, and Android stuff I'm writing about. So are you happy now about Xbox One? You think it's the future? Um, my Twitter feed is filled half with people who are saying, way to hold back the future, everybody, and people being <laughs> like, yay, Microsoft responding to public pressure like smart company does. It, it's weird. Discs live forever. And yeah. thanks, of course, to Jeff Jarvis, who stayed up very late with us in the Netherlands. Or no, uh, the Nuremberg's. No, this is Nuremberg, and it's very, very hot here. It's 95 degrees, so I had oh. two vice beers before the show, and even so, I didn't, I didn't have a rant against anyone. Yeah, you're so calm. You did, very mellow. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> always, always great to have Jeff on Smarter, uh, at buzzmachine.com, and, of course, his book, Public Parts, available in bookstores uh, everywhere. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next time on This Week. Good morning.